Saturday night. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let me show you who else is on the programme with me this evening. We have everyone's favourite Australian, Mr Peter Andre on the show tonight. There he is. Hey, Peter, how you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm very good. All the better for seeing you. We have also with him the absolutely fabulous Joanna Lumley. <laughs> One of the most exciting young actors around the star of Being Human, him and her and the History Boys, it's Russell Tovey. <laughs> and man the lifeboats, it's the rock behemoth, the master of musical mayhem, the Godzilla of power ballads, Meat Loaf. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that list myself, and they're currently number one. I'm delighted to have playing on the show this evening live, Rudimental. <laughs> the Collective. Uh, congratulations to you guys, by the way. This is your, your number one of the charts. This is your second number one, I believe. Is that right? That is, yeah. yeah. Really exciting. OK, uh, you're at the top of your game right now, but take heed, fellas <laughs> and ladies. We will. I've got three little letters for you. J L S. That's <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. Hang on. They're done though, aren't they? After five years at the top, yes, they've split. Oh man, sad times. Yeah, it is sad. The nation's teenagers have put their trousers at half mast as a sign of respect. <laughs> <laughs> I've met all the J L S boys. I really like them. Uh, here we are. If just in case you need money, there they are. I love. Them. There's. Let me get the names right. It's Aston, Orishe, Marvin, Ringo, uh, <laughs> Steve. But we will never see the like again. Not until the comeback tour in 18 months' time. <laughs> Meanwhile, their nemesis, One Direction, have been awarded the ultimate showbiz accolade. They have been immortalised in wax at Madame Tussauds. Here they are, look at them there. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's hard to pick them apart, really, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> I mean, the Harry Styles waxwork is so lifelike, it's pulled already. They had to drag it away from Vera Lynn in the oldest section. <laughs> Peter, I know you're in Madame Tussauds, aren't you? I am, yes, okay. but... But I made it all the way to Blackpool. You're in the Blackpool one now? Yeah. There's no shame in that. I don't know. I don't know. You know. Blackpool's lovely this time of year. It's lovely. OK, let's have a look. This is Peter's uh, waxwork in Madame Tussauds. Blimey. You know... They're, they're both as lifelike as each other. Yeah. <laughs> Joanna, you're also in Blackpool, I believe. Is that right? Oh, have I been moved? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's was, Joanna. They changed my clothes again, Jonathan. Well, it's nice, though. They keep you fresh. Yeah, that's true. At least there's something. <laughs> Meatloaf's... Now, Meatloaf's really hit the big time. Meatloaf's waxwork is in the New York City, Madame Tussauds. That's pretty exciting, Mr Loaf, is it not? Uh, oh, I thought maybe I got moved to Blackpool as well. No. <laughs> now, the one over here, they melted down to make One Direction. <laughs> You're still in New York. Russell, I know you are not yet in Madame Tussauds. Not yet, no. It's only a matter of time. I know they've got one big lump of wax they're thinking of melting down to make you. Okay. There it is. <laughs> I'm also in Blackpool, okay? <laughs> but that doesn't even look like me. It looks like Claire Balding has dragged herself up for like a, a court appearance or something. Look, that's what it looks like now. What's happened to the side of my face? <laughs> I know what it is. The Graham Norton waxwork comes out at night and punches me. That's what he does. <laughs> uh, so, sadly, uh, if you want to see JLS live, there's not much time left, OK? I've always been a big fan. I would like to make my own little tribute to JLS now to start the show, OK? So, <clears throat> I'm just going to warm up a bit. <laughs> Got a stretch. OK. I'm going to start with the crouch. <laughs> Not even sweating, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK, before you get my guests out, Russell, you, we're not going to see this yet, but you've got something very special in a black bag for us, is that right? Yes, kind of special, maybe. We <laughs> might see <laughs> a bit. <laughs> it's not like the end scene in Seven. You haven't got a head in there or something, <laughs> it's, yeah? it's really quite <laughs> OK, OK, yeah. we'll find out what that is later on. But let's get my first guest out. Uh, we've taken him into our hearts and into our tanning salons, I believe, ladies and gentlemen. He is <laughs> everyone's favourite Australian, Mr Peter Andre! <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, it's lovely to have you here. It's great to see you. Nice to see you. I feel like I'm seeing you a lot anyway because I watch the uh, the show that looks in at your life, and of course, you know, I think we all feel, I think we all do feel, those who watch it, that we really. <laughs> Don't yeah. take your trousers off as well. <laughs> No, that'll, that'll clear the room for sure. <laughs> Except for you. <laughs> How are you? Well, I'm not feeling as good as I was about 30 seconds ago. Because <laughs> now I'm looking at a kind of before and after situation right here. Yeah, but imagine if I could do all those flips that you just yes, did. Yes, that's why it does, yeah, it is remarkable for a man of my age. Um, <laughs> So the show, but I enjoy the show. Peter Andre, My Life, I enjoy watching that show. You're a very likeable character and I love seeing you with your kids. Um, before we talk about what's going on at the moment, though, I think, let, let's, if we can talk about this up front, because I was very sad and I was very moved, I'm sure everyone else was, by the tragedy yeah. that before your family at the end of last year. Yeah, you know, I mean, my, my brother Mike said to me, you know, he said, bro, when you lose somebody, you know, I, I lost my brother for people that, that didn't know. And um, when, he said, when you lose somebody, you don't get over it, you just get on with it. Did it help you to be able to talk about it on television? Did it help you knowing there were people out there who feel well about you and like you and, and, and wished you well, even though you were going through this terrible thing? Well, at first, I didn't want to do it. I, I rang up my management, I said, I want to just go away for six months. Of course, I can't go away away, because I've got my kids here, but I did want to go away. But then, you know, Claire kept saying to me, yeah, but what about you? You know, you want to help with Cancer Research UK? I said, at the moment, I don't want to know about Cancer Research UK. I was angry. You know, you would be. Yeah. Because it, it didn't... Because it took away somebody you loved. It didn't help, you know. That's how you think. But then eventually I thought, no, nah, we've got to turn this to a positive. And so all part of coming back and going back to work was for me to set up this whole foundation and get together with Cancer Research UK, which we've done now. And we're launching two buses around the country to to just get people to get checked up so that because early detection is absolute paramount. Well, good luck with you and, and good luck with the, the whole campaign that you're involved in. Let me ask you, but let's talk about music. Let's talk about the reason why you first came over here, where we first got to meet Peter Andre, was you are, you are a singing star. That's what you do, and that's obviously what you love doing. Is it strange to you now that you're as known for other things, perhaps even better known for other things outside of your music now yeah. in this country? I mean, I'm lucky I'm still here. Do you know, I sometimes... I think 22 years ago I got signed up on national TV in Australia and I was... I, I, I thought I would last a couple of years. I know. It really is embarrassing, isn't it? It really is. I that mean, who before... wears a jacket like that? <laughs> but do you miss that? I mean, I know you're still performing, no. but would you rather oh. that it was only the music you were known for? Look, I have to be honest with myself. The minute I released Insania, I, I asked... For problems. Mm -hmm. That was the minute I knew nobody was going to play me on radio. And it was, a, it was a good move in one way, but a silly move in another. And here's the funny thing. I get to sell out the O2 Arena yes. every two years. Yeah. I sell out the O2 Arena, but I can't get a song played on radio. Yeah. But that is my fault. Now, I thought, I thought, oh, it's because they think you're a reality star, or they... No, not star. I, they think you're a reality man, or they think you're this. And then I thought, maybe they just think your music's shit. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, um, the talent show you were on in Australia, which one... Was that New Faces? You've, oh, you're not. Well, I've never... Well, cos that must have been... You must have looked totally different. I look... You know what? Go on, then. Go on what? No, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Honestly. What? I, no, cos I know. Go I know. on what? What, Peter? Peter, Peter Do you know Andre, what? what? Honestly, I'm going to be honest, cos there's Aussies, there will be Aussies watching this show, and I know they're going to go to me, no wonder Australia didn't like you at the end. <laughs> I mean, look, okay. look at me here. Yes, you now look, look, you are now a modern gentleman, you're a metrosexual, good-looking, hunky guy, sitting there, polished Except and buffed, you. OK? Yeah, OK. But in 1990, <laughs> when Peter Andre first appeared on TV, well, it was a different story.
This is no, no, oh, no. But honestly, what was that? This is my time. What? This what? is my what time. What was that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is my time to ask the the Aussie public to please forgive me. But <laughs> I was I was a kid. You know, I was 15, 15 or something you like that. You were a kid with attention deficiency disorder from the look of things. Do you know... I, I'm sure... What was I'm that with the neck? I mean, I've never seen anything... I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it since. It's just... I, I was going through a, a, a teenage crisis... And puberty. It was puberty and, you know, didn't know... Where... Joanna, have you ever seen anyone move like that in public before? I thought he looked fantastic. See, so... you see? <laughs> You Joanna, see? I was young. I was young. That's why she's one of our best actresses. You see how well she lied then? <laughs> did you see how she pulled that off? Me, uh, what did you think of that performance? I, I'm getting my hair cut exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know what? I used to use... I used to use... You know, um, silhouette hairspray. Do you remember that? The black, the black one, right? It was this big. I used to use half a can of hairspray before I used to go on the show. Now I use about... Half a can. Half a can. Yeah. <laughs> different now, yeah. obviously. Leopard can't change his spots. Um, OK, it's so great to have you here. I love having you on the show because I, I think you're a charm. And, and the first time I interviewed you, I think, properly, you were with Katie still. And you came on my show with Katie Price and uh, I think... I don't think you'd actually got married yet. You hadn't got married. Uh, and, A, I thought you made a lovely couple, I'll be honest with you. I thought you... Were, and you obviously had something, that's for sure. Um, but at the same time, I was struck by your honesty and your sense of perspective. And you've still got that in spades. You still are one of the most kind of grounded and well-adjusted guys in the world. And I think that's why people love you. And if you don't mind me saying it, I think it's because you are such a decent guy. And that's why we Thank love you. watching you on TV and why you are so popular in this country. So oh, please don't you. feel when I'm showing that sort of stuff. Thank you, Sam. I'm being silly about you because I admire you a lot. Um, when I watch the show, when I see uh, you on TV, when I see My Life, the name of your show, uh, I love seeing it with your children. You have the most adorable children, and they're not just kind of like, you know, they're really pretty cute little things, but also what lovely personalities they have. They seem to be yeah, they are, really great. sweet kids. How do they deal with the filming? Do they enjoy it? I'm imagining that, it, I guess for them, that's a normal life now. Junior is a little star. That kid, I mean, he, he comes up to me and he goes, yo, dude, where are the cameras? I'm going, what do you mean, where are the cameras? Who do you think you are? <laughs> He said, he says, Jose Feliciano. I said to him, what do you mean, where's the cameras? He goes, got to show my flow, Dad. Got to show my flow. <laughs> He's seven. He's just one of those kids, you know. My daughter, obviously, I've always said she's going to be a nun, so she's, she's <laughs> leading that way. She's moving that way. She's very quiet, very polite. They're great kids. They're great kids. Here's a clip of Peter in the kitchen with them. I think this is going out this Thursday. This coming Thursday, yeah. this one. Uh, this is Peter in the kitchen with them and they're just adorable. Look at this. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. Excellent. <laughs> that was a joke without it even meaning to be a joke. Daddy, Daddy you smell weird. Junior, Junior, let me... chewing gum, dude. How can I smell weird? Not your mouth. You mean my face? Oh, your nose. Smell my nose. Ah, oh, I know what it is. Bit of self tan. Oh, nice yeah, well done. Oh, my gosh. Calm down. Bit of self tan going on there. My Life is on Thursdays, ITV2, 9pm. It's always a great watch. I always enjoy seeing you with your family on there. Uh, I also follow you on Twitter, and I was amazed. Some of the things you do to promote the show on Twitter, one thing in particular, uh, you announced that you would, um, if people followed you and if they watched the show, you would try and break a record, didn't you? It was a challenge, the Jaffa Cake Challenge. Tell me about this. Right, so the Jaffa Cake Challenge is simple. You've got to see how many Jaffa Cakes you can eat in one minute. Now, my, my cousin did 50 in five minutes. I thought... 50 yeah, in five did, minutes? I mean, he's huge. He's huge, right? <laughs> but he did it, 50. and I thought, well, that means you can do 10 a minute. You did how many in a minute did you do? Nine, but... <laughs> but it was... The world record, I think, is 17 in a minute. Impossible. Well, you say that, but someone's done it. That's why impossible. it's a world record. It's not, it's not impossible. No it's difficult. That's why it's worthy of note. But it's not impossible. <laughs> so, we are going to have a Jaffa Cake Challenge. At the end of the show, yes. I'm going to take Peter Andre, former Australian world record holder Jaffa Cake eater, possibly, <laughs> here in the studio. Okay? I can't wait. Can I say continued success? Oh, thanks. Peter thanks. Andre, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, Peter. You. <laughs> We're going to take a break now. Coming up afterwards, the lovely Joanna Lumley. Don't go away. Welcome back.
How lovely was Peter Andre? Wasn't he lovely, ladies and gentlemen? He'll be back at the end of the show eating Jaffa cakes for his country out here. Let's get my next guest out, though. She's always been a huge favourite of mine. Let's see her in action in one of the nation's favourite roles where she played that magnificent monster, Patsy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Joanna Lumley! <laughs> Come and sit down, Joanna. Getting full on wolf whistles out. I don't know if that's allowed anymore. Whoa. Joanna, how lovely to see you. It's good to be here. Hey, that was so good to see. That was one of the newer specials that was from, wasn't it? That yeah. clip we just showed I from last I wish I could year. remember, yes. It's fairly <laughs> recent. Uh, but you're doing more, I believe. There's talk about more. There's talk about a movie. Well, you probably know more about this than I do, because Miss Saunders, as you know, is kind of like a sphinx about, you know, what's actually going on. Apparently, she said in public, possibly on television, that she's going to write a film. Good. Then a press man said to me, and what about the musical? And then I felt a bit shriveled. My heart went a bit shriveled. Really? Yeah. Because I'm not really a singer. You're dancer. not a singer? Not really. But nor is Peter so Andre. Look where he's got with his <laughs> career, <so. laughs> Now, I've interviewed Joanna many times over the years. I don't know, the first time must have been 20 years ago, probably. And you, you do not appear to age. <gasps> it's remarkable. I mean, I have, you know I have. Well, I know, logically, you I must have done. I think it's because you're getting older as well. You, don't have, you haven't changed much, boy. But you've got a birthday coming up. Is it next, next week? Next week. Can we say <gasps> how, what birthday it is? 67. 67. <laughs> well, happy birthday in advance. Thank you so much. It's incredible, though. It's 67, I know. Yeah. Um, and do you, what do you do then? Do you, you're vegetarian, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, and do you exercise a lot? Do you look after yourself in that no, way? No, but or? we live in a tall, thin... We're lucky to have a big house, but it's very tall. It's like a budgerigar's cage right. with a ladder up it all the way up. I mean, not ladder. Obviously, we can afford stairs. <laughs> We've got stairs. But everything is upstairs or downstairs, so I spend the whole day running up and down. So that's it. And Sir Trevor Nunn, great man, Royal Shakespeare Company, one of the finest directors this country's ever seen, we go with our old-age passes, sad but charming, on the tube when we were rehearsing together, and he said, what I always do is run up the escalators, so I always do that as well. So it's kind of like putting exercise without going to the gym or something like that? Yeah, because yeah. I'm short-armed, mean, don't go to the gym, pay the fees, no, run up and down. Yeah, it makes sense. Drop things, pick it up with straight legs. I can't, but you can crouch down and spend 20 minutes getting up again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned uh, Trevor Nunn, of course, and you're now, you've just finished working with a great movie director as well. He's known for theatre, Martin Scorsese. Martin Sc I almost have to kneel down when I say his name. Martin Scorsese. He is phenomenal. So that must have been a, a terrific experience. It was you such an honour. He came calling you. Did he know of your work? Was he an absolutely I'd, fabulous I'd, fan? Well, I'd, lo I'd love to pretend that he knew everything about me. I might well have been a replacement for a replacement for somebody who'd fallen <laughs> out. I don't know, but I don't care about these things. I just said yes. The, the, they hadn't finished the sentence. Martin Scorsese would know. Yes! <laughs> I didn't want to know when or what the well, part was. Martin Scorsese wants to buy your house for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> when we finished my very small part in the film, I wish I could big it up and pretend I was huge. I'm not, I'm a small part in the film. I did kiss Leo DiCaprio. Wow. Um, so this is small, this film... but a bit of kissing, so what's the problem? So this is The Wolf of Wall Street, is yeah. the title at the moment. And Look, this we're is looking quite there. pleased, aren't we? So do you have, a, you have a, a, an on-screen relationship with him, or you just...? No, I'm his, this is the true story of a man called Jordan Belfort, who was a very bad hat, one of these banker boys in the 1990s. He was a true character, and Leo plays him. And in real life, because Jordan Belfort wrote the book, um, he, he, bright, he, well, he asked his wife's aunt to carry money, dollar bills, in quantities out of New York into Switzerland, into a, into a numbered bank account, knowing that she wouldn't be stopped because she looked so, well, looked like that. Um, a a, sweet, a sweet lady. Sweet little old lady. Sweet middle-aged lady. Well, sweet... It's absolutely... I'm so sad. And I wasn't allowed to wear any makeup or anything. I just looked absolutely ghastly. <laughs> and I practised, I practised my special... You know, slightly pouty looks and sort of, hi, that, all that business going, nothing. I had to just come out in this fearful old jacket. They'd got some really old clothes. I got little flat shoes. Anyway, I didn't care because I was with heroes. <laughs> but I did care secretly because I looked, you know, I had the HD million dollar lines. I never, oh. but you see, <laughs> I, 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 you look great. We all agree Joanna Lumley looks incredible, don't we? And, and sexy and vibrant yes. and... <laughs> yes! Hold on. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Peter, you might need to body block him if he tries to run for the dog. <laughs> uh, 
Let me, you know, one of the things I like about you is that you're not afraid of speaking your mind, OK? Yeah. And recently, a few times now, you've been in the papers for things which some people said, no, that's too outspoken, it's too controversial. The thing you said about weight recently, you said that we're a nation, and we are a, a nation, as most modern countries are these days, with a weight problem. Yeah. And you said people eat too many cakes. Yeah. I've noticed a new sort of cake thing coming on. Everybody's saying, oh, how lovely, so let's have cakes. We never did this. We, were, we didn't eat these cakes, you know, now, and I think it's charming, I'm not anti them, but people arriving with muffins or, or what are they called? Not cupcakes, they're called... Muffin. No, cupcakes are very no, popular not, again no, it's, Is it called a cupcake? Yes, yeah. The new ones, which come from America, which are the size of a pudding. Yeah, yeah. The size of a Christmas pudding, they go, oh, I must have one of these. You go, no, don't, you'll get fat. And then they go, oh, I'm fat, I'm just going to diet. And you go, you fool, just don't eat the cake. Yeah, it's true. This seems to make it's perfect true. sense. I know. There's a cause and a factor. <laughs> That's all you're pointing out, is... It's just logic. That's all. But then, uh, the, but then people seem to wonder... Have you noticed that, though, these days people seem to like getting wound up about something? I know. They seem to like, you know, going on Twitter or going... Around. Now, are you on Twitter, by the way? Do you use any no. of the social networking no. sites? Okay. No, I don't. Okay. I wouldn't, because I've, I, I've got to have some time in my own head to work out what I'm going to say next. No, I've got to mean it. <laughs> just, I've just got to have, have my... I can't... If it's... Dip, 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 I'm very anxious about too much of this going on because what people need is time to cruise, time to just be vacant, time to sit in a train, not doing anything, but just staring out of a window. Yeah. But if everybody's listening to stuff or writing stuff or seeing stuff, it, you, are, you become a reactive person, not a proactive. So you don't have time to think of your own thoughts. All you do is react to other people's thoughts. You know, there's absolutely something in that. I know when, when I was a kid growing up, some days were like we thought they were hell because there was no shops were open hardly. No. There was nothing on TV you wanted to watch yeah. unless you went to skiing or God. OK, it was really... <laughs> um, neither. Uh, and so you had to do something for yourself. So you, you made it up. You and now it's like it. there's so many channels. And... I know. I'm anxious about it. And I'm anxious about people who feel that they're really sort of, you know, cool to have phones which you answer. If you think of something, yeah. listen, they stop. You mean like those cool people who don't answer their phones? <laughs> <laughs> who let them ring? If you think of a show like Downton Abbey, We've all seen the downstairs where there's a kind of row of bells and they go, oh, that'll be the green drawing room, and up yeah. they get and run. That's all it is when you have a mobile phone. You go, oh, I'd better answer that. Why be servants? Yes. Yeah, you're right. It's absolutely right. Why always go, oh, who's that? I'd better answer it. Pah! Yeah. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, it's not someone you want to speak to. No, I know. So, but you, you, but you must have a mobile phone, though, Joanna. I don't, I don't use one. You don't, so you don't take it out with you or you just don't? Nope. I don't wow. use it. I've got one because now you, sometimes you only have to park with a mobile phone. Yes. They won't even take money. What's happening? Oh. Anyway, <laughs> so I've learned how to do the mobile phone for that, but so, I don't so use it. So basically, one. you've got a mobile phone for parking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love like that. Okay, would you give me your mobile phone number? Uh, no. no, no, not now. Yeah. <laughs> No, because then I, I can don't. call you and you've got no. someone not to answer. No, no, don't, because Eddie Izzard took my number and he phoned me and, and it was a really sweet call, oh, but, but he, I didn't he's... find it for three months until I parked the car. But he... <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see the Scorsese movie. I'm so thrilled because I love seeing you on screen, I love seeing you on TV, but I love seeing you in movies as well. I know we were talking about an old one you made years ago early on, which we didn't get a chance to talk about here, but, but I love seeing you on the big screen and you look just as gorgeous as ever. So Thanks, don't Johnson. even think about HD. Uh, happy birthday for Wednesday. Thanks. Will you all join me in saying happy birthday to Joanna? Happy birthday. Yeah. Joanna Lumley, so ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, that was wonderful. Join me after the break and we'll find out what Russell Toby has in that black bag, so don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. OK, let's get my next guest right out of here. He's one of our best young actors. It is the fabulous Mr Russell Tovey! <laughs> Russell, how are you? Russell Tovey. Wow. Wow, look at that. I, oh, I see what you've got here. Come and sit down. It's great to have you here. OK, so I think I can see what's popping out your black yeah, bag. Yeah, we tried to hide that. That was meant to be a big secret. So oh. who's that little fella? This is a new addition to my family. This would be... Oh. This is Rocky. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Can you, can you see a similarity? Wow. Or? Yeah, well, they do say dogs look like <laughs> their owners. 
Yeah. There is something oh. going on there in the years department, isn't there, Russell? Yeah, a little bit. He's like my like father, like son. That's why I wanted him. Hello, little boy. Oh, he's my. amazing. Oh my! Oh, I'm feeling broody. He sleeps all the time. He farts all the time. Oh, when I picked him up, I had him in a taxi for 15 minutes, and he farted oh. five times. Oh. I thought, that's my boy. Wow. That's what the one I want. What a beauty! And how old is he now? Five months. What a gorgeous dog. Oh, and so my I, boy. Yeah. Oh, I love him. Oh, look at that. Do you, might, do you want to cover his penis up? Because what? I'm just... No. It's a little... <laughs> you might want to slip a hand down there. I don't know, or maybe not, yeah. Well, it's know. just a, you're, He's looking right. at you adoringly. I'm getting the, old, I'm getting the one eye action going on there. <laughs> Sorry, he's baby. Getting, oh, he's right, a baby. Good man. Well, do you want to... Should we put him backstage so we can yeah, chat? Or do you want to yeah. keep him with you? I mean, yeah. that might be easy. Oh, I know. He's cute, isn't he? He is gorgeous, isn't he? Got him. You, you got, got him? Do not drop him. <laughs> See you later on, Rockstar. Uh, go on the carpet, go out that way. Don't drop him over the hard floor, you heartless. <laughs> uh, well, listen, never mind all the dog yeah, chat. Thank dog, you for bringing yeah. it. Hey, great. So bringing out a vet show. <laughs> we could we sit here and that, chat yeah. for hours about dogs. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I so love it. I don't know if we have any fans of being human here in the audience tonight, but it was one of, in my house, it was a must-see show. Oh. And we were, we were sad to see you leave it, I've got to be said. Yeah. What a great series. And you, I don't know if you know this, but your character, as you played him, you got voted one of the ten best werewolves. Did you know that? Ten, ten best work because there's a lot of werewolves to choose from. <laughs> there's isn't a lot. There? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a great role that was. Yeah, great, no, George great. was George was a big part of my life for a long time. I I love playing that character. And well, would I be right in thinking that's the role most people know you from, or do they come up when they come up to you in the street? What do people say they they know you? They recognise you from? Well, a lot of people say, "How do I know you?" So you go, "All right, I'm, I'm an actor." But what have you been in? So you sort of go, "Okay." So and it's, actors dread that question because yeah. they don't know who you are. You feel like a bit of a knob, basically, yeah. reeling off your CV. But you do, you reel off your CV and they're like, nah, nah, not seeing that, nah. <laughs> I don't really watch TV, mate, to be honest. <laughs> and you're like, okay, fine. Or if they do see it, they've seen me in Gavin and Stacey. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, I play a part in that called Budgie. There he is. Yeah. But you uh, didn't have a, you wasn't a big part, No, was it? not a big part, but so many people recognise me. And especially when I go back to Essex, they're like, Budgie, you're a legend, mate. <laughs> and I'm always like, what? I had like four lines. <laughs> but, but you delivered them I so delivered well. I delivered really well. I put uh, Billericay on the map. So you're an Essex boy. You just mentioned you're an Essex boy, Big originally. Uh, was Proud. it always on the cards for your acting? Were you the kind of family, did your family want you to go into that kind of, were they supportive or... Or, or were you an anomaly? Were you, was it unusual? Um, I was very eccentric as a kid. I used to kind of ricochet all over the place what I wanted to do. But I knew I wanted to be an actor from about the age of 10. I had like a summer holiday where I watched Dead Poets Society, Goonies, Stand By Me, Home Alone. And I remember thinking, I want to be American and a runaway. And I want to, <laughs> I want to find one-eyed Willie. That was my <laughs> agenda. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, so, and so then I, so I said to my parents, I want to go to drama club. So my mum was very behind me. My dad was paranoid. I nearly went to Sylvia Young's, you know, the theatre school. So what did your parents do? What, what were my they... parents run a coach company in Essex. I'll say the name, you'll probably edit it out, but Gatwick Flyer, that's a really good plug. The Gatwick Flyer? Yeah, but okay. that's, that'd be good. Where, uh, where, where does it go to? Uh, well, it's, it's a shuttle <laughs> service. <laughs> Okay, you got <laughs> to, to get me. Yeah, yeah. okay. To get, um, to get, but they also cover Stansted and South. Well, I apologise yeah. then for oh, jumping like, to the stupid know. conclusion that they were facts. merely Gatwick based. Get your facts right. They were no. Gatwick centric. <laughs> um, they were shuttle service. So did they? Did your dad want you to go into that? Did he? My help dad. You? Yeah, my. They kind of tentatively asked me to do uh, a coach kind of license to learn my coach skills, and I sort of was like, Nah, I'm not going to do that. Because yeah. you get phone call at three in the morning saying like. A coach of passengers has broke down in A127. Can you get out there? And you're not going to say no? No, you can't, because it's your family business. So I sort of haven't put myself in that position. But they knew that, that I was kind of like the... Very smart of you, though, not to go that way. Yeah, cruel, yeah. maybe. I should. My brother now runs a business. And, and he hates you, probably, because yeah, he gets the three o'clock call when you can't yeah. go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, they, they were very... My mum was very much... My dad was worried that I'd go to drama club, drama school, come out with no qualifications, just be able to tap dance. Yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> And it didn't go that way, but I can't tap dance. And that, that, won't, that won't get you to Gatwick. No, that won't. You can't tap dance to Gatwick. No. Um, OK, so let's talk about Job Lot, then, because yes, that's why yeah. I invite you on. Job Lot is, I've seen the first episode. Have you? It's very funny. Yeah, I've got it on DVD. And it starts on Monday on ITV at 9.30. Correct. OK, uh, tell me about the premise, though. For those who haven't seen it, obviously they haven't yet. What, what's... Premise, it's set in a Midlands job centre, and it's an observational comedy, basically observing the job seekers and the people who work in the job centres. So it's kind of the minutiae of... Uh, a job seeker, like the things that when you work in an office situation that kind of become very kind of 
heightened. Have a look at this. This is a clip from Job Lot. Starts Monday night on ITV. You're going to like it. Oh, 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 no need. No, no, I insist. My treat. It'd be great to have someone to talk to. You know, to chase the demons away. Honestly, please. I won't take no for an answer. No. You deserve it. No, I'd love to, honestly. Please. OK. It's a date. <laughs> it's not a date. Excellent. I'll just go and round everyone up. Monday night, I think it's very funny. Yeah. And very humorous as well. OK, uh, I need to talk to you about History Boys, because yeah, History okay. Boys was just an incredible film. I didn't see it on stage. I wish I'd seen you Did guys do it on stage. I never saw it on stage. I, I wish I had. Uh, and you were here in London, and then you all went, because you all went to Broadway, didn't you? Yeah, we went around the world to begin with. We went to Hong Kong, Sydney, New Zealand, then we ended up in Broadway. So incredible. we did the show about 600 and something And so times. a real troupe of young actors. Yeah. So many of you have gone on to the bigger things. I'm sure the rest of them will as well. Uh, what are your memories of that period? That must have been such a remarkable time. It was just like a phenomenon. I mean, it was just... The Broadway was the thing that was the most kind of awe-inspiring because we felt like what... We were like the Broadway version of One Direction. You know, whatever your, your taste was, it was catered for, and people in New York loved us. And, like, we felt like a boy band. Looking back, you realise how amazing experience it was. And Richard Griffiths, the late Richard Griffiths, which is so sad, actually said to us, boys, this is rare. This is not going to happen all the time. And at that age, you're like, yeah, all right, Rizzo, shut up. It's going to be fine. I'm going to get the next one. I'm going to go Broadway with that. But you realise now, being around for a bit longer, that it, it was such a, a unique, yeah. incredible experience. And all of us, I mean, all of us worked before that. But being associated with the History Boys, since that point, it felt like we crossed all mediums, like the film and the play, we did a radio play. As soon as the show finished and we landed back in London, it felt like the boardroom doors of the acting profession really yeah. went, come in, take a seat. What do you fancy doing? You know, I spoke to James Corden about it briefly, because, of course, he was part of the, the troop with you there. You see him at the back, he looks pretty different now as well. As at the back, there's another... He's not happy about that picture. He's not happy about that no. picture, no. He'll be, he'll be thrilled with each other. We, we could just say we showed it in the wrong ratio. Um, <laughs> but uh, he was saying that, like, almost everyone who was anyone came to see that in New York. I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. We have a thing... I have a thing when you're doing a show. When you do a show for so long, you ask the front of the house, is there any ABs in tonight? Are there any adrenaline boosters? Every night was an adrenaline booster. We had them all. We had everybody. We had, like, Paul Newman come back, Julia Roberts come back, Tom Hanks, David Bowie and man started off the stand ovation. Well, Steve was David Bowie started off a standing yeah. ovation? And wow. we was out there and we saw him and he's all dressed in white and he stood up first and it was just and like... did you hear go, bravo! Well done, boys! You're all stars! Yeah. 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 <laughs> the history, boys! <laughs> Something like that. But he started off the ovation and it was incredible. And, like, one night, actually, we came back and we went to go out and Callista Flockhart and Harrison Ford were standing there. And we were all like, oh, my God, thank you so much for coming back. It's great. Met them and everything. They didn't want to come back. They were just waiting for their car. So the security <laughs> had put them backstage so that they could just get away from everybody outside. They hated the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think anything will ever replace that experience in your life. My advice to you would be get a puppy. Do you think... Oh, done that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look right. at about holding. You've lost that. You have oh, lost that. Oh puppy. my God! Rocky's been trying to lovely. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's why. Like, is he farted yet? No. No. Oh. Oh, are you talking about meatloaf? <laughs> 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 Sorry, me. Okay, so uh, it's been great having you here. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in saying thank you to the fabulous Mr. Russell Tovey? Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Great to have you here. Thank, thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Don't go away, because coming after the break, we will have that Jaffa Cake Challenge. Rudimental will be playing live, and the bad out of hell himself, Meatloaf, will be joining me on the couch. OK, welcome back. Well, my next guest is out here already. He's the only man whose voice registers on the Richter scale. Have a look at him in action. Here he is.
ladies and gentlemen. No, thank you. There he is. Great to have you here, sir. It is such a pleasure to be here. And the fact that she just said she worked with Scorsese, I passed out. Right. Hey, <laughs> hey, fatty, put down that cake. <laughs> and then, and then, then she talks talking about overweight people, and then that blew it. <laughs> I'm um, not overweight. I'm big boned. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't have you any other way, sir. <laughs> Uh, so how long have you been on the road for now? How long have you been performing live? How long have you been doing your, your uh, this show? This is my uh, 47th year. Wow, 47 years on the road. Yeah. Man, that's incredible. That's incredible. And you and, still... Uh, I, I know if you're really into your craft and really um, motivated, you'll do anything. I was homeless for nine months. Wow. To, uh, I lived up above the Magic Castle, and I started out with sleeping bag and managed to get enough money to buy a tent. We should point out the Magic Castle is an actual place in Los yes. Angeles, not some sort of dream thing. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I was above a Magic Castle <laughs> with a fairy and a pixie. Yeah. Uh, it's a place in that, and that, so you're up in the hills above that. You were living right in the hills. I was the only thing I had to fight off was the coyotes. Wow, but they are, they're actually up there, aren't they? There's yeah, they're there. up there. Yeah, they come around you yeah. too. Yeah. They come up there. <laughs> But I'm going to give you an exclusive. Okay. And I, I got permission to do this. Is uh, this, this isn't coyote related, though, I imagine. No, is it? no, no. <laughs> no, it's not coyote. Uh, people have been asking now for years because uh, Jim Steinman and I worked on Bat Out of Hell together. Sure. And we worked on Bat 2 together. And we sort of worked on Dead Ringer together. And by the way, that little video you showed of Cher a minute ago, uh, I didn't realize till the until we started looking back at the photo shoot, she wasn't wearing underwear. And, uh, well, we have a was... photograph of the kind of outfit yeah, yeah, she yeah, had yeah. on, I think. So, we... That's so, that's so unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> and that looks painful as well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, people have been asking for you, and this is, the, this is on your show. Wait, wait a second, time. because oh, okay. I want them to listen to this, and there's still, still a shockwave going around <laughs> from Cher, yeah. <laughs> But, but it's OK, I'm not wearing underwear either. <laughs> Good. OK, so here's your exclusive. Don't take that picture down. It's going to give people nightmares. Uh, so this is true. So Jim so, Steinman, and I think the collaborations between the two of you, that's produced his best work and some of your best work oh, as well. Oh, it, it, we, we were... It's produced both of our best works. Yeah. So we've been communicating back and forth for the last six months every day by email. And we're going to work together again. Wow. I'm not allowed to tell you the title, Jim said, but we are working together, and we're working together on another song, and I'm twisting his arm for the third one. So, you, so you're hoping to get a whole album out of him, I guess, aren't you? Uh, no, nah, I won't get a whole album out Dude, of him. Dude, what's wrong with this guy? Why doesn't he want a whole album? What's wrong with him? He, Is he lazy? We, no, he's not lazy. <laughs> well, what's it, was he stupid? He's an artist. <laughs> he's an artist, but come on. He knows we want to hear more from you guys together. Uh, yeah, but... You he, want, he, you're prepared to work with him. I'm, yeah, we've been prepared to work, but it, he's very slow. Give him a shake or something. <laughs> he's very, I, I, Give him a cake. Okay, <laughs> hmm? that's it. <laughs> when do we get to hear this uh, new track? Uh, we you have, haven't recorded it yet, probably. It, no, we haven't recorded it. It'll probably be uh, in September 2014. What the f***? <laughs> I'm that's, telling that's you, that's almost two slow. years away. That's not <laughs> slow. That's glacial. That's like the ice age creeping back. We we've cut three tracks. We're getting ready to cut three more, and then we're hopefully cut three with Steinman, and then we start in January with Jimmy. That must be driving you crazy. Uh, Jimmy always drives me crazy, but yeah. I drive him crazy too. And you enjoy? I mean, you, I, I know you're an actor as well as a, a singer. Yeah, I like that. I'm getting ready to do. Uh, my 60th film called A Perfect Stranger. Wow, 60 movies. Yeah. <laughs> we put a photograph up of Fight Club there, we're talking, and I think people that haven't seen it will be surprised at uh, the way you look in that because you're recovering uh, victim of, is of cancer that you've had, and then because of the drugs you're on, you've grown breasts in this. Oh, thing. yeah. But that suit, it covered, went from here to here, weighed 44 pounds. Wow. The breast were 28 pounds. Wow. That's a lot of breastage. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> and I'm telling you, ever since then, I see women with large breasts, and I feel 
I go, oh, God, their neck's got to be killing them. <laughs> and uh, so they invented a harness How for was it having breasts? Did you enjoy having breasts? Not particularly. Mm. How, did other people react strangely oh, to the they, You think? <laughs> yeah, I'd walk on set and everybody would come up and go. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make any different. Women, oh, hey, 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 hey. Brad Pitt, oh, meat, meat, meat. Yeah. Ed Norton, oh, look at them things. Everybody wanted to touch them. Well, you've never been so popular. No, you know, and I, I, that's what I figured. The world wants to go around and touch every, every woman's breast. Um, I avoid that. Uh, well, you, legally, you have to. Um, <laughs> hey, me, it's great to see you again. Uh, when you're back over in the UK, I know I've got some dates here. Uh, you're going to be doing Ireland, uh, 14th of May in Dublin, 17th of May, then Nottingham again. You're picking up that gig, uh, doing Manchester as and well. And Manchester on the 25th. You and particularly and like Ireland, don't you? Ireland, you're very fond of Ireland. I am very fond of Ireland. I like Ireland a lot. I'm very fond of the UK a lot. Uh, they like me here, I like them. We do like you here. I, I'm glad I, you're back. I love you people. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Meatloaf. OK, it's the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to try and uh, eat as many Jaffa cakes as we can in a minute. Who knows, we might make the record books, we might not. I've got to be Andre's record. I think it was eight, he said earlier, and we'll find out. Will you welcome them back? Mr Peter Andre, Russell Tovey and Joanna Lumley coming out, guys. Let's go over there. Come on up, meet the students. OK, so... Here we go. How long are you going to have? Are you going to be here? One minute. One minute. You have one minute. Are you ready? <laughs> On your marks. Get set. <sighs> Go! Go! <laughs> We didn't have someone down here counting. They've been counting upstairs. The results are coming in now. OK, give them to me in no particular order. <laughs> P8, how many? What? P8, 12 Jaffa cakes. <laughs> in one OK. And I ate... No, I did not only eat 11. <laughs> no, I didn't eat 11. I demand a recount. I demand a recount. I demand a recount. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, Peter Andre, the Jaffa Cake champion, ladies and gentlemen. Give it to you. Well done, Lee. He's it, he's it. Jack Lee. Jack Lee. Jack Lee. Okay, thanks to all my guests tonight. Thank you, Peter, Russell, Joanna, and of course, Milo. Thank you, sir. Thanks to you for watching. Next week, I'll be joined by Spock and Uhura from the massive new Star Trek movie. That's Zachary Quinto and Zoe Saldana. Brilliant young comedian Russell Howard, the cheeky star of The Chase, will be here, Bradley Walsh. And we'll also have music from Radiohead legend Tom York. But now, performing their number one single, Waiting All Night, featuring the fabulous Ella Eyre on vocals, it is Rudimental. <laughs> That you need me, tell me that you want me. I've been waiting all night for you to tell me. Tell me that you need me, tell me that you want me.
This weekend, a royal visit and a murder at a factory brings young Detective Constable Morse to the case. There's new drama tomorrow night. Endeavour is at eight before the best of British theatre is out for the 2013 Olivier Awards at 10.15. Next tonight, Arnie stars in Commando.